we were in first grade and we went to DC for our grandfather's inauguration. Mm -hmm. And we didn't know that that was abnormal. I thought that every grandfather was president. <laughs> I thought it was this title that you got when you were a grandfather. And I got back to school and I asked my friends in first grade when her grandfather's inauguration was because I was so excited to go to what I thought were so many more. I was so upset actually that I went home and journaled about this. <laughs> Sasha. I'm Marissa. I'm Naya. And I'm Nanea. And today, we're going to be interviewing another set of twins, Jenna and Barbara Bush. We'd love to be in a sister book club. Yes. <laughs> That's a club to have. As you know, BookTube is a vibrant community of people who come to YouTube to share their love of reading and books. And we're very excited today to have a special sisters episode with Jenna Bush Hager and Barbara Pierce Bush to discuss your children's book and best-selling book, Sisters First. I know my sister, Nanea, is dying to ask the first question, so I'll let her go ahead. It's a truly honor meeting both of you. I really enjoyed reading your book. I related to the stories on a personal level as a young woman and as a sister. Growing up, my sister and I were put into categories. I was the athletic one and she was the academic one. And I know a lot of sisters experience this. Do you guys relate to that at all? Well, I, and we know what it feels like for yeah, people yeah. to think like, oh, you're this way. It's mm -hmm. funny how, I think especially with twins, y'all are twins, are y'all yes. twins? We are twins. We're twins. We're twins. <laughs> so you, you'll feel some of this, but that you have to be the inverse of each other, that one has to be one way and the other one should therefore be the opposite. So even now people will say to me like, oh, aren't you the loud one and she's the quiet one? And I'm like, you don't really know her at, <laughs> <laughs> at all. Or somebody literally said this to me on the book tour, which is kind of rude. They were like, so she's the smart one. Oh. <laughs> yeah, it always bothered me actually because I didn't like the idea that we had to be opposites of each other because we're so close in many ways. And it just seemed like it simplified myself or simplified Jenna in ways that took away the sort of beautiful facets of who she is and who I am. That's one of the reasons why we wrote this book too is that we witnessed this love in all sisterhood, whether you're your blood sisters or friends or colleagues. We believe in women who are lifting other women up. I have a six and a four year old and Mila, my oldest, helps her little sissy Poppy with her handwriting, which is very cute. And one time, Poppy was a tiny baby, and Mila said, Mommy, one day my sissy is gonna rule the world. Aww. It's actually, so it's, actually it's in Ernest's children's book, book. Wow, so a lot of the inspiration came from your own children. Yeah, I was like, maybe one day she can be president. She was like, Mom, no, presidents are all men. Like first I like elbowed my husband. He's like, what, I'm just because I'm okay. <laughs> And then I was like, we have to put her in talented and gifted. She's, she's brilliant, genius. She's genius. she knows all the presidents. And then, you know, my husband was like, no, she knows two presidents. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so while you both are totally relatable and down to earth, we can't forget that your grandfather and your father are former presidents of the United States of America. As I know, Barbara, you mentioned that you thought every grandfather went through inauguration. So when did you kind of think that that wasn't normal? I think then I didn't get it still, what was going on, but I did realize that not everyone's grandfather was in the same position, probably. But I think it also speaks a lot to our grand, to our grandfather. Yeah. You know, this was before smartphones, so he wasn't you know, like on Twitter. Um, when he was hanging out with us, he was paying attention to us. He was pushing us in a swing and asking us about our day. And so, so it spoke to his humility mm -hmm. and really his priorities, which his family was, was his North Star. And I think that's a model that we lose more and more of, which is the humility and goodness. And I'm very curious as well. I know you share a lot of stories about your family. Did they have any input after you wrote everything or did you kind of just stick with your own perspective on each of the memories? Pretty much. I mean, no one really offered input, but our dad did edit it oh. with <laughs> us, which was great. So it goes back to seventh grade. Yeah, it was oh like a seventh, gosh. like he was going word for word. He doesn't think you should use extra words. So he was going word for word through the book oh, yeah. with us, which was really nice. It was sort of painful, but it was great. Um, our, my grandmother, our grandmother, was who I was most nervous to show it to. Um, she's now passed away, but she read it before she died. And in the book, I write about this letter that she wrote me. Oh, I remember <laughs> the story. 
I was in a tennis match, which I heard you're a tennis player. I'm not as good as you are. Um, so I was losing, so I kind of put on this show and I was trying to be funny and make people laugh. She was laugh. making everyone that was watching laugh. Trying to. And like doing the worm. And <laughs> My grandmother believed in good sportsmanship. And so if you saw some of my moves, you might think I was being a bad sport. So she wrote me a letter that said, you were a bad sport, blah, blah, blah. And then at the end it said like, P.S. don't tell anybody about this letter. Oh and, then and then she published it. Published so it. She published so it. we were with her one summer and she's like, do you have a copy of the galley of your book? I want to read it. And I was like, no. <laughs> Even though I did, because I was too scared. I wanted to go home, come back to New York first, let her read she it. She would read it, but we would not be there. Because we did write our truth, mm -hmm. um, which they could have been not happy about. But she loved it, but luckily. she loved it. So in the book, you guys lay out your emotions of different memories from childhood all the way to adulthood. What was the process of writing the book like for you? Mm -hmm. Well, it was pretty fun because we, were, we would brainstorm before we started writing about the stories that we wanted to include. And so we'd go on long walks on the West Side Highway in New York or go hiking and talk about different memories that we both had and fill in the details of each other's memories. Mm -hmm. And I think on those walks, we talked about what we knew needed to be included, like what memories really felt raw and fresh and like something that really impacted the rest of our lives and then who should write them. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and since it covers such a broad space of time, how did you decide what stayed in and what was kept out? Well, I think we chose the, the experiences and stories that have really shaped our life and I think there's, it's pretty fun to write from a distance actually, especially about memories that might be hard or challenging. When you have time to look back on them, you see those experiences differently. And so for us, it was pretty important to be vulnerable and to share both hard things and very positive things. We didn't want to shy away from including things that were painful. So Jenna, you talk about your miscarriage and having the fear of maybe not getting pregnant afterwards. And Barbara, you went through an awful, awful experience with losing your boyfriend at a very young age to suicide. So I wanted to ask you guys, were you scared to be so raw and share such intimate stories? Well, I definitely was. I had the chapter about the former boyfriend's suicide. That was the first chapter I wrote. And then I actually asked the publisher not to include it mm -hmm. because I, I was really uncertain about publishing it. But I ended up speaking with his family who were incredibly supportive. And I think for them, he had passed away when I was 17 and he was 17. So this was, you know, almost tw a little bit less than 20 years later. And so it was nice to be able to reconnect with them, but also I think probably it meant a lot to them that I still thought about him, that he was still present in my life in some way. And so they were very sweet and they approved of us including it. That story in particular, I mean, people in the airport will regularly mention that story to me and I will be standing with someone and we'll both be crying and like hugging and it's this very healing moment. Yeah, that story meant a lot to me. I lost a friend when I was 13. So the fact that you were open about it and discussed it, um, yeah, I, I was able to connect with it a lot and it meant a lot. It's important to talk about mental health so that people that are experiencing it don't feel so mm -hmm. alone. And I think it's the same with miscarriage. I mean, people are talking about it a lot more um, yes. now. There was this feeling of being alone, but I think that's the nature of pain. That's why conversations around any of these things that can be really painful are important because you're not alone. I mean, our whole female side of our family has dealt with infertility. But the point is, we're here, you know? Yeah. Our mom had babies, our grandmother had one child, our great-grandmother had one child. Now I have three babies. So yeah. I think wow. that's what kids do. They bring these mm -hmm. new lives full of hope and joy. Um, but we wanted to do a kind of lightning round Q&A, if that's okay. We love this. Okay. <laughs> Favorite character about each other? I love her heart, but also that she puts it to action. I love how fun and joyful my sister is. All-time favorite book. Ooh. Ooh. The Ooh, first man. book that really opened my eyes was The Bluest Eye by Toni Morrison. I think Americana by Chimamanda Adichie. I started a book club at work, and my favorite, one of my favorite books is this book called A Woman Is No Man. If you haven't read it, you should. Um, favorite movie? Favorite mm. movie. We don't, I mean, it's so sad. I like sad, dramatic movies. That's my oh, sister. Like, I, I, oh, I okay, just, watch this twin oh, moment. Watch this twin moment. One, two, two three. three. Beaches. Beaches. <laughs> um, what would I find in your sister's fridge right now? She would probably have blueberries and some <laughs> almond milk. 
expired. <laughs> she okay. doesn't have string cheese. Correct. Mm -hmm. Grapes. Correct. I have children. For your children, <laughs> yeah. I have a very stocked fridge and a bottle of wine. Yes. <laughs> Again, I have children. <laughs> Just kidding. Um, how are you guys most different? Well, we look different. <laughs> <laughs> What's your most embarrassing moment as sisters? Uh, we did end up on the cover of People magazine after ordering a margarita, which yes. was embarrassing and probably stupid. Dumb. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, the headline said, oops, they did it again. No. So that actually implies we did it twice, <laughs> which is even more stupid. <laughs> There is a part in the story where you mentioned Malia and Sasha Obama came into the White House. You guys yeah. kind of gave them a tour. Was there any advice that you also gave them? We didn't not we didn't really give them advice because really I don't think they need advice and they <laughs> didn't need advice then. But we had so much fun because the first time we went to the White House was when our grandfather was there and we were seven. And so we were a similar age to how old they were. So we took them around and we showed them all of our hiding places that oh, we had cute. left when we were little and all these different nooks and like banisters to slide down and we got to show off all of our favorite little spots when we were their age to them, which was really sweet. So mm -hmm. no advice, just good hiding places. <laughs> so we wrote letters to them just about the beauty of the position because it is so incredible to live history mm -hmm. that it can be difficult to watch the people that you love, which are your parents, criticize because to us, our parents aren't the president and the first lady, mm -hmm. they're our mom and dad. And yeah. we knew they would feel the same way and that sometimes it's hard. And really they're- a, a, They're more than a they're headline. They're more than that. And to yeah, us, they're way yeah. more than a headline. We are going to be doing the last line mm -hmm. of your guys' book. Cool. So you're going to read the last line of your memoir. Okay. Okay, the last line, and I usually cry reading this last page, but I will try not to. I'm slightly dehydrated, that helps. <laughs> Says, you have each other, I thought to myself. You can walk through this wild and wonderful life together. You will fight, yes, and you will adapt to each other's quirks, but you will do it together. You will make your sister feel like she is enough. And for me, your mama, well, that is enough. More than enough, that is everything. And that is beautiful. What made you decide to make that your last line? Mm -hmm. Well, I'm in, in the last chapter, I write about how my sister, um, who was in Rwanda, and in this moment, it was thinking of my sister, who was making the world a better place miles away from where I was, that I was always thinking of her while she was there, and then my little girls, who were um, emulating this relationship that we have in their own way. And the end of the book is really just about that, about sisterhood, about how when you find those partners, whether they're blood sisters or friends or colleagues, they do make you feel mm -hmm. like you can be yourself and you can be brave and take risks. And so I'm the end of the book holding my girls. In the beginning of your book, when I first opened it, there's a poem called Summer Days by Mary Oliver. And I was very curious to like the meaning behind it to both of you. Like, why did you put it in the beginning? Mm -hmm. Well, we love that poem. And our mom's mom, Jenna Welch, who Jenna's named after, we live down the street from her and, and our mom's dad, Harold Welch. And Midland is the desert in Texas. So over the summer, it's incredibly hot. So what we would do at night, because we couldn't play outside all day, because it was 120 degrees. Yeah. Um, we'd go over to my grandmother's house with our wet hair and nightgowns. And she would lay a blanket out in the front yard. And she was a huge naturalist and she'd point out all the constellations to us. And we loved, all of us loved Mary Oliver. And a poem that we love from Mary Oliver is The Summer Day and it ends, doesn't everything die at last and too soon? Tell me how is it you plan to live your one wild and precious life? And we always loved that. It's sort of this reminder and call of you have one wild and precious life. And so we put it there and we ended up making it the subtitle um, to our book as well. Um, Our wild and wonderful life. And the publishers were like, well, you know they're going to think like Margarita yeah. Wild. <laughs> and we were like, we, we, know. Get that. we know. We get that. But I think that's also the beauty of owning your own story. Yeah. And, you know, the good and the bad and the, the tabloidy, you yeah. know, is that you can write your truth. And it's really empowering to own your own story and your own truth. And I think the end of that poem, The Summer Day by Mary Oliver, has always been kind of a challenge mm -hmm. to Barbara and I, which is how do we want to, we have one life, how do we want to spend it? 
And so it was important that we, we also love her. Yeah, Mary, love Oliver, Mary Oliver, if you want to be inspired, read her poetry. It's really beautiful. So beautiful. And if you like nature, which we do, you'll love it more. Me and my sister grew up in Hawaii, and my parents, when we get home from school, drop your bags, go outside. Yeah. Stay out there until dawn, you can come yeah. back in. Don't come in until dinner's yeah. ready. Exactly. You, learn, you learn how to live by living in the wilderness, like yeah. living outside. Yeah. There's no technology. There's yes. no. There's nothing besides you and whoever you're mm -hmm. with. Yeah. Like your think. sister. <laughs> like, like your, your sister. sister. Yes. Well, thank you guys so much for coming and joining us for this booktube book club. We really appreciate you discussing your book with us. And thank you guys so much for coming. Thank you, yes. 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 Thank you for your time and your honesty and your openness. And Thanks. So thank we really you. appreciate it. Thank, thank you all for you. having <laughs> us, <laughs> all the sisters. <laughs> Oh <laughs> right after you say your name, we're gonna say Amber. I'm yelling at you. I'm older. I'm older.